Today you're going to learn about how neurological events such as traumatic brain injury can affect vision. Although neurological disorders may cause blindness, oculomotor dysfunction, or trouble with visual acuity, problems with spatial processing are just as common, although less commonly recognized and treated. The visual system relies on many structures working together, including the eyes, nerves, and areas of the brain associated with vision. In today's video, we're going to discuss how injury to particular areas of the brain can compromise vision and hinder recovery. Broadly speaking, vision is comprised of two processes, focal and ambient vision. Focal vision is related to central vision and is accomplished through aiming the eye at an object. Ambient vision is related to peripheral vision and is accomplished primarily by reflex activity. The ambient process gives you information about where you are in space. The input to the visual field is delivered to the midbrain, where it becomes part of the sensory motor feedback loop. The ambient system is more involved with the motor component of the sensory motor system, and must work to sync with sensory information from kinesthetic, proprioceptive, tactile, and vestibular systems. After these inputs are reconciled, they're able to be delivered to the cortex. Disruptions of the ambient visual system are common after neurological insult, such as a stroke, mild traumatic brain injury, or even mild whiplash. Failure of the ambient visual system can result in symptoms associated with the development of post-traumatic vision syndrome or visual midline shift syndrome. Following a neurological event, mismatches in ambient vision and neuromotor systems may cause a person to shift their concept of midline. This shift can occur laterally, causing a person to orient themselves such that they're shifted to the left or the right, or up and down such that a person feels as though they're leaning backward or forward. This change in the perception of one's midline can result in impaired posture, balance, and gait. The patient with visual midline shift syndrome may see the floor as being tilted. They may often lean to one side, lean forward or backward, or they may have problems with coordination, balance, and posture. It's noteworthy to mention that often patients have normal visual acuity and will be told that they have normal eyesight after a standard vision exam. This can be extremely frustrating for the patient and lead down a path to nowhere. Additionally, patients may present with other visual issues, such as convergence insufficiency, which will resolve with proper treatment aimed at promoting balance between the ambient and focal visual processes. Treatment for visual midline shift syndrome is crucial early in the rehab process, as associated neuromotor and sensory systems are dependent upon proper interaction with the ambient visual system. Additionally, Higher order cognitive functions rely on proper input from lower level information that's processed at the level of the midbrain. If the patient's concept of midline is not addressed early in the intervention, associated therapies may cause compensatory strategies and fail to provide meaningful relief, especially after therapy ends. In visual midline shift syndrome, the ambient visual process is affected on one side so that the visual field is relatively compressed on the affected side and relatively expanded on the other side the unaffected side. Visual midline shift syndrome can be successfully treated by a combination of occlusion and prism lenses. Yoked prism lenses, or lenses that have the base of the prism facing the same direction, can often help to expand the visual field of the affected side and relatively compress the visual field of the unaffected side. This helps the person weight bear normally through the affected side. By normalizing the compression between visual fields, the ambient vision and midline will be improved and other therapies such as cognitive therapy or physical therapy will then be able to provide meaningful relief due to the improved integration of processing from various neurological subsystems. What is post-traumatic vision syndrome? Following a neurological event, a person may exhibit symptoms thought to be associated with a breakdown of the ambient visual process and potential involvement of the midbrain. Common symptoms of post-traumatic vision syndrome include double vision, blurred near vision, perception of movement of stationary objects, eye strain, headache, sensitivity to light, staring behavior, low blink rate, impaired concentration, impaired attention, and impaired comprehension, especially when reading. Common characteristics include a tendency to turn the eyes outward, difficulty moving the eyes towards each other, difficulty looking at objects of different distances, difficulty with eye movement, and increased nearsightedness. Individuals may suffer from this syndrome for many years and are often given diagnoses associated with related symptoms. 
For example, a person with post-traumatic vision syndrome who may have headache, vestibular dysfunction, and sensitivity to light may be diagnosed with vestibular migraine. However, treating the vestibular dysfunction and managing the migraine does not address the root cause of the dysfunction, and thus it will fail to alleviate symptoms long-term and can contribute to poor outcomes. Treatment for post-traumatic vision syndrome includes using prism lenses or binasal occlusion. The purpose of these interventions is to increase the relative contribution of the ambient visual system to the overall visual process. Binasal occlusion describes using glasses that have blocked or occluded portions of the lenses at the nasal portion of the visual field. Following a neurological event such as a TBI or whiplash, visual pathways may be disrupted and have a negative impact on orientation and balance due to the discrepancy between sensory and visual inputs. Binasal occlusion is prescribed to help patients with spatial orientation and may also be helpful for symptoms associated with visual dysfunction such as double or blurred vision. Binasal occlusion often prevents the environment from moving and improves walking and balance. Binasal occlusion can make other therapies, such as physical therapy, more effective. Neuro-optometrists may prescribe binasal occlusion for weeks or months following a neurological condition. At first, they're worn several hours a day, if not for the majority of the day, and the use is decreased as other therapies are implemented and the patient begins to recover function of the related neurological subsystems. Binasal occlusion can be accomplished by fitting a pair of frames or non-prescription glasses with a frosted piece of tape over the nasal portion of each eye. So here I have in my hand a pair of dollar store frames fitted with some frosted tape. This is an example of what binasal occlusion looks like. And it should make sense if it didn't already. And basically it's just cutting out that central vision and it's pushing everything out so that I cannot use as much focal visual process uh, in terms of relative contribution as I can that ambient visual process. Also, the middle of the visual field is where the eyes will have to reconcile objects that you're focusing on. So if you have double vision, you know, where one eye perceives the object is slightly different from where the other eye perceives the object. So if we take out that portion of the visual field, you know, you'll often be seeing something with one eye, but the other will be occluded from the piece of tape. So you won't have the discrepancy uh, of those two images, and thus you won't have the double vision. Personally, I've worn these for a couple of weeks, and I would say it's dramatically improved my balance and gait, uh, and it's helped some of the physical therapy things, the vestibular training, some of the balance oriented um, corrective exercises. It's helped those to sink in and solidify and become more effective. And I was, use I was using these almost all the time in the beginning and now I've gotten down to where I'm only wearing them maybe a few hours a day. Um, and they've been really helpful. So it's something easy you can do, uh, you know, either with your patients or with yourself um, and give it a shot, I think, you know, all together this probably cost me $3 to do. So, you know, why not give it a shot? If you want something that's actually tailored to what your needs are, or if you have the visual midline shift and you need prisms, um, I highly recommend you go to Neurooptometrist. Like any other, you know, piece of information you get off the internet, there's no way to tell if you're the one who's going to benefit from this or not. Um, so best to get an evaluation before you go playing with the way that your brain interprets information from your environment. Thanks a lot for watching today's video. I'm Greg Chaplin with the Rehab Corner and Chaplin Performance.